to our passage, Mark chapter 12, which you'll find on page 982 of the Church Bibles. Mark chapter 12, it begins. He then began to speak to them in parables. Who is the he? Well, usually in the gospel accounts, it's reasonable to assume that it's Jesus. And that's the case here. If you have one of the excellent NIV study Bibles, you'll know that it's the case because the dialogue that follows is printed in red. We also know it's the case by looking at the sentence before at the end of chapter 11. Who's the they? Again, look back at the previous chapter. Jesus is in the temple in Jerusalem and he's conversing with the Jewish chief priests, teachers and elders who work there and who have sought him out. Things hadn't ended well at the end of chapter 11. You'll see that the NIV Bible has headed verses 27 to 33. The authority of Jesus questioned. That's what the priests, etc., have been doing, and it's never a good idea. They asked Jesus a question. He responded with another, which they chose not to answer. And Jesus' words to them immediately before our passage were, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. As you can see, things weren't going well between Jesus and the Jewish leaders. If the scene were being acted out in today's church, conflict resolution experts would probably be called upon to try to defuse the situation. The Church of England has just set aside half a million pounds to be spent in this way. But what does Jesus do? He digs the hole deeper. I wonder what you think about the parable of the talents. Margaret, what was it that you said when you heard that it was going to be the parable of the talents? You said, you said, good, it's a better story than the one about a fig tree. Possibly uh, on hearing it, you think, well, it's just a story about a man who owned a vineyard and was in dispute with his tenants. Nothing unusual about that. Call the conflict resolution experts. The Jewish chief priests, teachers and elders didn't see it that way. They were fuming. So much so that, verse 12, they looked for a way to arrest Jesus because they knew he had spoken the parable against them. What had Jesus said that had caused them so much offence? The usual definition of a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. This parable has a heavenly meaning. It's about God. But it has an earthly meaning as well. It's about God and his relationship with his people on earth. Jesus is using the parable form to say things directly against the Jewish leaders. And he's doing it to their face. As a man who planted a vineyard. 
Both vineyards and fig trees were used by the Old Testament prophets to symbolize Israel. Jesus has already told his disciples by means of the withered fig tree miracle that Old Testament Israel was done for because of the way that they had rejected God. Now he says the same things to the Jewish leaders and, in so doing, points the finger at them as the ones responsible. The Jews, hearing Jesus, would have thought of what the prophet Isaiah had said. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the house of Israel. Isaiah 5, 7. And remember too, the first great gardening project. The Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. Genesis 2.8 It was clear who the man in Jesus' parable represented. God. The man provided for his vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press, and built a watchtower. So, too, God provided for Israel's needs. He looked after his people with providential care. And he continues to do so for us. He provides for all our needs. In 1636, Roger Williams founded the capital of Rhode Island and named it Providence in honor of God's merciful providence in providing for the first American settlers. Yet, the vineyard in the parable was only rented to the farmers. The man retained ownership of it. We do well to remember that that which we have is only entrusted to us to steward for a season. Everything on earth, everything God has provided, remains his. Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. In the parable, verse 2, at harvest time, the man sent a servant to the tenants to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. Now, this is entirely reasonable. He's collecting the rent. He isn't an unreasonable landlord. He waits until harvest, and he's only asking for some of the fruit. But the vineyard's tenants seized the man's servant, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Verse 3. The man persists in sending servants, but the tenants persisted in their response. Some they beat, others they killed. Verse 5. The man in the parable represents God. The vineyard is Old Testament Israel. Who are the servants? Who are the people? God sent to Old Testament Israel as his servants, his messengers. They were prophets, men such as Isaiah. And the response of Israel to the prophets had often been a shameful one, rejecting the message of repentance that they sought to bring from God, just as the servants in the parable were treated shamefully. And so in the parable we reach the
the last one that the man had to send, a son whom he loved, verse 6. This takes us back to the beginning of Mark's gospel account to Jesus' baptism. At that time, a voice came from heaven, You are my son whom I love, chapter 1, verse 11. And also to Jesus' transfiguration, when a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love, listen to him. Chapter 8, verse 7. Jesus is identifying himself with the son whom the man sends. He's saying that the man expects his son to be respected. But he's also saying that he knows that this won't be the case. Verse 7. The tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him. This echoes the predictions Jesus has given to his disciples about what will happen to him. Chapter 10, verse 33. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death. The reason the tenants give for killing the vineyard owner's son is significant. The inheritance will be ours. The reason why the man had sent his servants to the vineyard, and latterly his son, was not because he was in need of fruit. It was because he wished to establish a right relationship between him and the tenants, one where they acknowledged that he was the owner and they were tenants. But all along, it was this that rankled with them. It was this that they had rebelled against. We want to be our own master, rather than a mere tenant of yours. I uh, recall a parishioner of one of my former parishes, renowned for her feistiness. Over coffee, after the service, the conversation went this way. Remember, this is our church, Carl not yours. My response? Uh, well, actually, Jean, uh, it doesn't belong to either of us. It's God's. I'm happy to say that as well as being feisty, uh, Jean was also a great support to me. Uh, and I've got a beautiful print of Bishop Latimer preaching before Edward VI that she and her husband Michael gave as a farewell gift. The mistake that Old Testament Israel kept on making was forgetting their tenant status and the obligation that this placed them under toward God. Time and time again, they thought they knew better and they weren't obedient to him. And now they were going to do so again by rejecting Jesus and killing him. Verse 9. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. The owner had been patient with the tenants time and time again, giving them another chance. The final chance comes when he sends his son whom he loved. But then comes a time of reckoning and judgment. God has his appointed time for everything, just as harvest time was referred to in the parable. 
when will the time come when the tenants will be killed? As Jesus leaves the temple, he says of it, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Chapter 13, verse 2. And this came about when the temple was destroyed by the Romans in A.D. 70. Although Jesus and all his first followers were Jewish, the continuing rejection of Jesus as Lord and Saviour by the majority of the Jews was what spurred Paul to turn to the Gentiles, the non-Jews. Acts 18.5 Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. But when the Jews opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clear of my responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. By the second century, the church was composed almost entirely of Gentiles, the vineyard that is the church, the new Israel, had been given to others. The Jewish chief priests, teachers, and elders knew what Jesus was saying, and they didn't like it. And so, they looked for a way to arrest him. Their reason for not doing so there and then was because they were afraid of the crowd. This could lead us to think that following the crowd is a good thing. But crowds can be notoriously fickle. Within a week, the chief priests were able to stir up the crowd to their way of thinking. And, as a result, we read that, wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate had Jesus flogged, and handed him over to be crucified. Chapter 15, verse 15. The chief priests, teachers, and elders had questioned Jesus' authority. Now they were to reject him. The crowd turned against Jesus as they shouted, Crucify him! The Jews at Corinth opposed Paul with his message that Jesus was the Christ, their Messiah. God's truth isn't discerned by finding out what most people think. It's conveyed to us by the messengers that God sends as his servants, the prophets of the Old Testament who point toward the coming of Jesus, at whose transfiguration a voice had come from the cloud saying, This is my Son, whom I love. Listen to him. May we acknowledge that everything in heaven and on earth is thine, O Lord. May we listen to Jesus, the Jesus we find revealed to us through the Bible, the Old and New Testaments. May we not reject Jesus and his teaching, but rather turn to him as our Lord and Saviour. Churches, one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. Amen.